Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Many people don't know this about my family, but macular degeneration runs in it. Uh, my grandmother had ma macular degeneration. Uh, my mom has macular degeneration, and the chances of me developing macular degeneration at some point in my life are pretty high. So uh, I take it very seriously when I see a technology come along to aid those who can't see as well as some of us can. And so one of the, uh, I guess, student teams uh, that I was judging this morning was note taker and uh, the person responsible for this kind of coming together uh, is not just really the uh, I guess founder slash creator but you are the primary client for this David yes that's correct primary client in the beginning although we've expanded to using uh, uh, many other low vision students half a dozen initially and now over 50 okay so what we have is something called note taker what is it exactly so the note taker is trying to help the 19 million low vision adults in the U.S. in taking notes in class. So it turns out that fewer than 40 percent of low vision adults participate in the workforce and we feel like the inaccessibility of education is in part to blame for that. And rather than pursuing a policy, uh, uh, a policy solution, we feel like equipping them with technology that can make an environment accessible according to their own needs is the way to go about doing it. And sometimes, uh, you know, when you read somebody else's notes, uh, you can't make sense of them. That's correct. In fact, what I'd like to say about that is, uh, in the past, uh, is that, you know, reading someone's notes, someone else's notes, it's about as, it's as foreign as a textbook, only less legible. Usually, but this is the, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act pretty much mandates this at the university level. It mandates it, but it's not enough. Uh, so the the research clearly shows back from the 20s that. A student who takes their own notes, their, their retention is going to be benefited even if they never subsequently review their own notes. So even though you get copies of notes from your peers after the class is over, you didn't engage in the class, so why did you go there at all? Okay, so what we have behind us is a prototype. It's, right now they're doing a demonstration, so I can't interrupt. But could you at least explain the setup and, and how this is working today? Sure. So the problem that low vision students face in the classroom is that you've got this great big board and to see that board they need assistive technologies and what those, those assistive technologies are going to do is provide magnification. The problem is when they take some notes, uh, they'll write some notes on their paper, they'll go up, they'll find a spot on the board, they have to find it because it's a limited field of view when they're zoomed in, go back down to their notes and go back up. So there's a cycling there that has a delay that fully sighted students don't have to deal with and that delay is going to accumulate if, the, if they're in a fast paced class. So I've developed a technology called the Note Taker that provides them a split screen interface on a c tablet computer It sits flat on the desk. Half of the screen is live video coming from a camera and the other half is a digital notepad where they can take handwritten or typed notes. So effectively you've used a, a tablet PC uh, and have developed a prototype that plugs in by way of USB, that's powered by way of USB, uh, puts one note on the screen, a split screen with a camera. And this is just not, not just any average webcam. I mean, this is a pretty decent camera with a, a, a pretty fantastic capabilities. Sure. So if you just give a, a, a live video from the board, you're going to need to be able to zoom in on it. But once you're zoomed in on it, you have that limited field of view. So you're going to need to be able to move that camera around. So if we first put a zoom lens on the camera, and then to move it around, you're going to need some motors, servo motors beneath it to pan and tilt. Now, traditionally, pan, tilt, zoom cameras, uh, cameras with these motors, they are moved by pushing little buttons that move them in small increments. But this is very slow, and it's not going to let the, fo the student focus on taking their own notes. So we've enabled the software so that you can control a camera by gestures alone. So any feature you push on the software, you can drag your finger along the software, and whatever's under your finger will remain on your fingers. The camera pans and tilts. Similarly, you can double tap on any point, and it'll center on. The, it'll focus on that. And this is actually recording the video, and, and then potentially progressively, like uh, still images. That's correct. So we're recording the audio and the video, and we know what time you took every keystroke or every pinch stroke. So if you want to review your notes later, you don't just have your notes, your, your uh, handwritten notes, and just some video and audio but rather you have all of them together so that when you go through your notes you might find oh I wasn't taking enough notes on this particular topic I don't remember it so you can highlight those notes and see what audio and video were being recorded at that time and supplement what notes that you, you the, the notes that you left out furthermore during the lecture a professor will often get in the way when you're trying to take notes and since we're keeping up uh, keeping a recording of the video 
we can actually just go back in time with a simple gesture that will allow the student to go to a uh, video where the professor wasn't in the way maybe a half a second ago, take his notes, and then with another simple gesture go back to the live video and then continue watching the professor uh, right on the board. It seems like it'd be a pretty good uh, gadget for any student, not just those who couldn't necessarily see as well. So we think so. Right now the prototype requires uh, a fair amount of bulk because of the, the high level of zoom that low vision students require, but we do believe that the the review facilities are very uh, would be very interesting to fully sighted individuals and so as we miniaturize the technology and perhaps target them uh, with, with, with more webcam style um, um, cameras that have higher resolution that will be made available with USB 3 and Thunderbolt and other newer interconnect technologies then we think that this solution will actually uh, generalized to a much broader audience and if you can generalize to that audience then you can commoditize the product it will become much cheaper and in doing that you'll be able to satisfy the needs of that uh, uh, initial low vision market which is much smaller. So you've got a lot of promise this is your second year at Imagine Cup? That's correct we enrolled the, uh, an earlier version of this work in the touch and tablet accessibility category in uh, the Imagine Cup tw uh, 2010 and took first place in that category in Poland last year. So we're happy to be back here to get some additional exposure uh, for our third generation product. And, and you've got the pretty the des design engineer here? Is he the uh, hardware guy? Yeah. Hardware guy. <laughs> so this is Chen Yan. Chen is a designer here. Uh, he's responsible for taking, where's the second gen? So Chen Yan is responsible for taking a very ugly prototype, the second generation. You got it? I think so. And so, first generation, third generation. we have a split screen interface here. On one half of the screen, we have a digital notepad where you can take handwritten notes or typed if you prefer. On the other half, we have our live video. If we want to move the camera around to reposition it, we can just tap on any point like so, and it will center that point in the screen. Similarly, we can take any point and drag it, and that point will remain under our finger. So you have very intuitive gesture-based control. If we need to, we can zoom in. So you can see here we're zooming in, zooming in. There's not much interesting scenery here, but yesterday we were on the 20th floor and picking up license plates in the parking lot below. So <laughs> nice camera. Yes, 36 act optical zoom gives us plenty of uh, plenty, plenty of room to play with. So, um, so as you're looking at the live video, you can take your notes. If the professor gets in the way, uh, if you'll permit my hand to be a professor, he gets in the way. I can just do a nice gesture here, and it will go back in time to a previous frame and I can continue writing my notes and when I'm done I can just go back forward or go forward in time to the live video so you can see this is live video now so we actually yes yeah, so the software that we developed is on the left hand side but actually so Microsoft OneNote has is a Microsoft Office product but we have a plugin written in C Sharp that integrates inside OneNote so that our program can talk to it and, and uh, it exposes the XML that OneNote stores your, uh, your notes in so then this is a, an actual working model here, not just a prototype, I mean like a real, it looks like something I could buy off the shelf. How much did this cost to assemble? So this is about $3,000, which is actually a reasonable cost for assistive technology because other high-tech assistive technologies are about that cost. But the nice thing is that this was printed using stereolithography, so it's 3D printing, the shell of it is. And when we go to manufacture it, we're going to go to building an injection mold, and that will reduce the cost by probably half. And between that and collecting the uh, several industrial components inside and, and collecting them into a single component that we design that will further reduce the cost and the size. Any thoughts of using anything from Arduino? Sorry? Any, uh, have you heard of Arduino before? Oh, uh, so the Arduino, yes. So. Um, you could use that, but we actually will need a custom design uh, board to handle some of the specialized functionality. The Arduino is a little more general purpose and higher, uh, higher power consumption for the, what we need. So then you're drawing the, uh, the juice, if you will, from, uh, the, uh, from your, the notebook computer, your, your tablet PC, but you have a, an extra battery in there. How long will that last? So actually we're drawing some juice from the laptop, just a little bit actually, and then most of it's coming from the battery. The battery will last about eight hours, which will outlive any tablet right yeah. now. <laughs> I was gonna say. Right. <laughs> it would we could, we could make the battery larger if we wanted, but the tablet's the limiting factor. The nice thing is that USB 3 is just around the corner and so is Thunderbolt. And if uh, once those proliferate, we're going to be able to give more power to the peripheral, which will allow us to take the battery out of this 
and then and uh, you know rely on the battery on the computer directly, which will then continue to decrease the size of the prototype. So this isn't, I, I think, really. I mean, as you as you pointed out, you've got a lot of promise with this. Distance learning seems to be a huge buzzword. This could very well be the catalyst for a lot more distance learning. Sure, so we've actually thought about this. You could install such a camera into a classroom. You have one professor teaching it, and you have any arbitrarily, num arbitrarily large numbers of students connecting around the world. And the thing that you'll need there is, while this is meant to serve uh, the needs of a low vision user, what you'd need, uh, and it does so by having an optical zoom lens, in that case what you'd need is a higher resolution camera so that everyone that connects to the, to the lecture could independently control where the camera is, is pointing uh, through digital zoom. And if you have high enough uh, resolution, then anyone connecting to it can aim at any part of the board and, and pick up the notes at any, uh, uh, anywhere on the board. Well, I got to tell you, I was not just impressed with the implementation, uh, but specifically the hardware design. I, like, like I said, this looks better than half the products I see on the shelf. Uh, well, we have a design student to thank for that, uh, Chin over there. I'm, uh, I'm a computer science and math major myself, and I never, in the beginning, had much regard for the humanities majors and the, the design students, but I now uh, have the utmost respect for them. I would say so. Well, thank you again for uh, participating in the Imagine Cup. Thank you. Glad to be here.